defining moment of that big run of the world masters and then after that he just became a different animal oh, very hungry. confident very assured but when he played here against i think it was johnny clayton if my memory serves me correctly he was schooled by johnny 59 and then he obviously yeah, really went away, put things right and he is now a giant of the german game and the world game and he's one of the best players to watch yeah, oh, shot the first really leg, Gabriel Clemens. 12 guard break. Second leg against Gabriel the very first, first leg. Game on. The man who owns one of the best dart shirts on the planet. Do you like that one? I love that. I'm black and yellow, Dan. Yeah, Come of on. course, yeah. Stay with it. Yeah, I mean, look, I've, I've always 41. been... I've been consistent in my admiration for Gabriel Clemens' flights. I think it's a nice enough dart shirt, but I don't think it's quite the level of his flights. He's not them in a while, is he? No. Do you think he'll get a new set for the World Cup? Oh, interesting. I hadn't thought of that. He has, of course, changed his darts, changed manufacturers earlier on this year. Doesn't Fifty seem nine. to have affected him. Although I have to say, I don't think he's played brilliantly well. He had a good summer series, had a great run in one of the tournaments there, reached a semi-final. But he's not really lit up the Pro Tour. 81. Ironically... He's made bigger strides by winning a couple of games at the big TV tournaments, of course. Won a game at the World Match Play, beat Rob Cross, defending champion in his defence. So do you think his game is starting to shift? Because you have <laughs> certain players who are really strong on the floor, and that never changes. But some players 85. tend to prioritise things differently and evolve into stage players. And maybe Gabe is one of those guys. I mean, he has... He had a World Series final in Germany and has started on the stage, but dominantly we, we've looked at him as a as a floor guy until those points. And uh, primarily, I do because I think he's won games. You know, he won a he's oh, only game World Cup premium, didn't he? Gabriele I don't think he's played that well. He's just won those games. I think actually he played better when he was defeated at the match. Like he finished off with a tie skin. That was cool being a really 16. good game. Yeah, it was wicked. Really good game. Don't underestimate how we beat at the Grand Prix as well. Damage on the second leg. Yeah. Stefan. Response from Stefan, though. The leg is Stefan to throw clash. first. We're we'll just getting started. Yeah, I think it's so much of game this. On is about luck. We can construct narratives about all the sort of, oh, well, he's a floor player, he's a stage player, whatever. It's about when your spells of good form come around. There are undoubtedly oh. players who struggled over long, long periods to bring their floor game to the big stages. We've seen that, you know, the likes of Mark Walsh, you know, who were always regarded as oh. incredible floor players, you know, until quite recently. Ian White was a player that you could level that accusation I don't think he can anymore he's won multiple Euro Tour titles he's made a major semi-final for the first time in the PDC 100 and then there are always players who didn't really look that terrifying on the floor and yet always seem to produce the goods on big stages Kevin Painter Kevin Painter Mark Webster I think you could make How Mark Webster only has one PDC title is beyond me when he was making the latter stages of so many big tournaments over and over again. Well, the funny thing was about that one with Webby is that he beat Richie Burnett and Bad Nauheim in Germany hey, on the stage. <laughs> it was a players' championship that had semis and final on the stage. Well, I mean, let's let's pick someone who's, who's very, very current. Daryl Gurney. Now, Daryl Gurney, we know, is an incredible player. 59. Guy, but a lot of his best stuff seems to come in the big TV tournaments. He hasn't got a host of Pro Tour titles. 85. Well, I suppose it begs the question, who's the best floor player right now that hasn't done it on the stage? Well, I mean, there is a number you could look at. 98. Gabriel Clemens, I think before you start putting him in those brackets, he's got to go and win a title on the floor, and he hasn't done that yet. Yeah, he's been very, very close. Hasn't. Yeah. Dorby, Henderson, Clemens, top of league, probably three of the top five, I'd say. 93. Well, Stefan Siemens put himself in with a chance here of going into the lead. Ooh, another. Oh. Well, that facial expression told a story. Because 
All he wanted to do there. 120. Was into the first so half. Uniquire. Was collected. Yeah, groups them together so well. Like. Yeah, very there. distinctive uh, shape 70. of the dart. Well, there is Gabriel Works to throw very first. well for him. Gate yeah. Seatman pins that top. So we saw Stefan Seatman and we didn't know how grand his designs were in this sport. Gabriel hits his second 177. When he first appeared on the Euro Tour, you know, coming through host nation qualifiers, you don't, you know, we've just seen Marcus Buffler. Yeah, we don't know what his plans are. I haven't spoken to him, certainly. There's very little information about him. Now, it may be. Or perfect darts to start the leg, but no more. No, Maybe that Marcus Buffalo really does want to make a go of this and we'll see more of him. But the best way to improve, the best way to get better, is to be testing no, yourself constantly against these guys. And Stefan Seatman, as credit to him, after some dabbling as a host nation qualifier in the Euro Tour, he's now got his tour card, he's playing week in, week out. No, and this is where he can really find out how far he can go. Because you don't know. You don't know until you try. That's true. There are players around the world who may be scratching their head 40, right now saying that. Really you're, well, 134. Than that, you're not here. Yeah. He is. And if you look at how he qualified, it's pretty impressive. He beat Justin Pipe with 100 average to get here. It, 94. I think we've seen... I mean, look, we're bound to. We're seeing more of him because he's playing on the tour. But we've certainly seen him playing better at times on the tour no, than not. we ever saw him Gabriel, play you require when he played 40. as a host nation qualifier. He has to if he's going to make it yeah, work. He's got to be better. Gabriel but the thing is, it is happening. The two legs that Gabriel first. Clemens has Game won on. have been a 12 and a 13. But the stuff in between has been a bit bitty. But I do get the feeling that maybe Seatman is the kind of player that may have to come to Q school on multiple occasions before finding his purple patch. Someone who we could possibly say he is like is maybe Richie Edhouse, who is back on tour for next year, mm -hmm. has been backwards and forwards to Q school, but there's no doubting his talent. He's just waiting for that real purple patch where he can try and 85. get some big, big runs in there to make an indentation in the world rankings. One hundred. Winner of this one's going to play James Wade. So, either oh, way, James is not going to have the crowd with him. No, certainly not. I don't know what the ticket sales are for this weekend. It'll certainly be livelier than it's been tonight, this afternoon. One hundred. Seven years ago, one hundred and forty-one. Four Germans to cheer on for them. I was reading Instagram earlier, and EDC Europe sent out a release about the fact that no ticket sales would be allowed at the door as per local regulations. So people who had existing tickets will have the one with a third one seven seven there from Gabe. He's now starting to shift into gear, or is he going to be robbed with brilliance? Double ten. Gets yeah, it. 3 2. Uh, Stefan Seatman. Excellent stuff. The 177. A perfect setup yeah. shot from the German giant. And Stefan Seatman holds his nerve, holds his throw. Re establishes that one leg advantage. 140. Low to mid 90s average right now for Stefan Seatman. But he is 60% on his doubles. Look at that from Gabriel Clements. He's got this in his locker. This is not a freak display from the German giant. We perhaps haven't seen it as much as we would like this year. 60. But it is a process of learning. This is his third year on the tour, Gabriel Clement. And he could well become German number one by the end of this weekend. But he admits himself the whole time when people have been saying, oh, you're the best German player already. Don't worry about the rankings. Look at what you've been doing. 108. And certainly his scoring power is one of the factors that lead people to say that. Well, he's saying, I know I've got a lot to learn. This is... Really I'm not putting myself in that bracket yet. I think that's a good mentality because there are going to be naysayers. 
57. does overtake Max Hopp in the rankings. People will come back and say, well, they haven't won anything. Eight Max ten? has won two titles. So I think he just oh, wants to blow that Gabriel to the side 64. and say, do you know, I want to focus on my stuff, doing yeah. things at my own pace. And I, I admire that a lot. All Gabriel needs to do is keep getting better. Yeah, he's getting better Gabriel. in this game because it is another sub-15 dart leg from Gabriel Clemens. Winning legs 12, 13 and 14. Needs to find a break nine from somewhere score. and this is a huge opportunity. Seatman only kicking off with nine. You're trying to see he's going for the set. So he's got 12, 13, 14. So we're looking for an 11. 11, 10 and a 9. 11 and a 15. Okay. So we want always going the other way. I'll take a 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and a 9. He's got the, got the 12, the 13. Why don't, why don't we just no, have the 9, the 10, and 11? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. I'm surprised he didn't. Fall. No, 99. The way that he groups his darts, he does remind me of, of Simon Whitlock. They're a similar kind of shape. They are slightly different, but you can see he's trying to do the same 47. thing. He doesn't quite move around the hockey and use the angles of approach as much as Whitlock, but he does just gather those darts together so tightly when he's grouping them well. That's not a great example of it, to be fair. Sometimes you'll see him cr cram three on a pinhead. Oh, yeah. He's very good at it. And I just get the feeling that the balance of the dart he uses with... The stem and flight combo is really, really pinpoint. Certain darts that we've seen today, I can't say that about, like the Jason Lowe darts. I think they're very custom. Here we go. But there's a oh, lot of players who can throw that stuff that he's got there. And I actually think that that setup would work for Simon Whitlock really well. I don't think, I'm, I'm surprised Whitlock hasn't experimented with something very, very similar. I mean, really he really up in his garage or something, but this could be the break of throw. And yeah, it is. That's another 13 Gabriel. dart leg from Gabriel Clemens, who is looking very, very first. impressive here. Right, let's look for a different pattern then. So he's got two 13s. Game on. So now we want a 14 and a 12. Okay, two, two of, of each. each. Yeah, all right. I mean, look, Gabriel Clemens will be very, very happy with that, I would imagine, because he's still averaging around that 107 mark. 100. And this will be the standout display of the day if he can maintain this and get another couple of legs. And it has to be said 58. that on the opening day, when there has been some criticism about, oh, don't all the, oh, there's so many German players here, it's not really fair. One of the reasons is you've got to have the same rules for every tournament. So if a load of people pull out, as they have in these strange times, then the places go to host nation qualifiers. That will be the same at every European tour. Hey, you won't just dish it out to other Europeans or affiliate members because you don't have affiliate qualifiers at every single European tour event. Had we been in Belgium or the Netherlands or wherever else, they would have got to host nation players there. We are in Germany, that's what happened. 43. And but also, they have to win their first match for rankings to count, which yeah, makes for the top it fair. Two. Yeah, for, for the top two, certainly. But... You have to say that among the best performers of the day have been Gabriel Clemens, Max Hopp, and Kai Gotthard. Kai Gotthard was unbelievable and yet still lost. I think Safety. the Germans have given a great account of themselves. They sure saw some resilience from Nico Kurtz, even though it wasn't the standard that we've seen from him in the past. I think he's probably still thinking, how did I get away with that? Really Possibly, but he did. Can Gabriel get away with this leg? Oh, well, not anymore. But oh, again, he manages to follow a dart into the Should trouble there and leaves himself on double 12. That's nice. That oh. is not, and that's greedy. That is really greedy. Look where Gab's on. He's on 24. Get a shot at the ball, will you? 70. How many times have I got to say this? Really want 24. You're robbing yourself of chances in a close game. And you're going to get punished. Double six again. And he yeah, pins it back. again, Gabriel Gabriel Clemens. Back. It is an 18 dart leg. It is his worst winning leg of this match. He will not bear, care because he is one leg away from a meeting with James Wade. You know what, I'd feel 100. a little bit of sympathy for Zietman if he'd have gone big 18 and hit a one. But by going low into the fort, going for that treble, 
I don't have any sympathy because it was a bad One choice. Order. Every dart player now and again is going to miss a big single. But you're less likely to miss that big, big 18 than going for that skinny bit in the northeast corner. 99. He's averaging 1 180 per match on the floor this year, Zietman. He's only played 100. 12 matches. He's got 12 180s, whereas Gabe's got 110. Severe gap in quality, and even with that, Zietman has had hey, chances five. to make this tight. Well, Stefan Zietman, I think he could do well to take a, a leaf out of Gabriel's book and just treat this whole Fifty-nine. first couple of years on the tour as a learning process and just try and improve as long as you're getting better then it doesn't matter how quickly that's happening because if you no, keep on improving stay on the tour and just keep on getting better then you can fashion opportunities to do big things and Gabriel Clemens I believe can do big things in this game 145. Because he's got the ingredients to do so. Even if he thinks he's not improving, Stefan is, because he's getting more experience. This is Big 18, and it's tops, and this is a must. This is a huge dart for this match. Don't hold his throw. No idea. Potentially to stay alive, really because that might be the last dart he throws in the European Darts Grand Prix. Gabriel Clemens, match darts incoming, and he will get two. And he only needs one. It's a 14 data. Very, very impressive from the German number two, who within 48 hours could become the German number one. That is the highest average we've seen today on the opening day of the tournament. Almost 104 from the German giant. Just the one 180, but three 177s. And if he brings that kind of scoring power into his match with James Wade, the number eight seed tomorrow, then even the machine might have a problem with Gabriel Clemens. We'll leave you with a few words from him before we return with our final game of the night. Chris Dobie and Willie O'Connor. Gaga, herzlichen yeah. Glückwunsch in der zweiten Runde. Und eine tolle Partie von dir auch noch. Uh, ton plus average von dir. Und uh, wie schätzt du es ein? Ja, ich bin einfach glücklich, mal wieder gut gespielt zu haben. Und ja, ich freue mich, uh, morgen wieder zu spielen. Auch nicht alltäglich in der ersten Runde von dem European Tour Event gegen den, gegen den Landsmann zu spielen. Äh, habt ihr, habt ihr vor dem Spiel miteinander gesprochen? Ihr kennt euch ja auch ganz gut, Sibi und du. Ja, natürlich haben wir vorher auch gesprochen, aber wir haben jetzt, jetzt nicht zusammen warm gespielt. Klar, macht man dann halt nicht, aber natürlich äh, sagt man sich Hallo und wie geht's und, und ja, tschüss auch. <lacht> <lacht> aber äh, ja, äh, Steffen hat aber auch wirklich extrem gut gespielt. Also muss man jetzt auch einfach sagen, er hätte heute, glaube ich, einige Spiele gewonnen. Gaga, es hat uns Freude gemacht, euch zuzuschauen. Viel Erfolg morgen dir in der zweiten Runde. Großen Applaus für den German Giant, Gabriel Clemens.